My talk today is gratitude peace in our home or our house. And I want to update you about some things, first of all. Um, well, let's actually go to Ernest's quote and then I'll update them. Ernest Holmes says, house is the symbol of the physical body and all the habitations of the soul. So whenever in the Bible you see the word house, it doesn't necessarily just mean a house. It means anything that's inhabited with soul, which is you, which is the depth of our being. So our physical body is our house, is our home, as well as our homes, as well as our, our uh, spiritual centers, all our homes. So I want to update you about... Um, about the windows, first of all. The really great news is it was not a hate crime at all. It was a couple of young Marines, young Marines, who were go on their way up to Universal Studios to a pre-Halloween um, extravaganza, and they stopped in, Tulega, stopped in San Clemente to shop for something in Walmart. And because they're boys, they went to the camping section, and because they're boys, they bought BB guns. I told you, I told you. And because they're boys, they went shooting. They weren't shooting marine issue anything. They were shooting their bought toys, and they shot out into the hills, and they got bored, so they came into San Clemente and shot out some cars, our windows. Then they went all the way up the coast to Huntington Beach, where they were caught. 45 different counts. 45 different counts. And the police officer that was telling me this um, was getting the how much are our, our windows going to cost from me because the, George will, the judge will likely order restitution, he said, but don't count on it because with so many counts, this is going to take a long time before it even comes the, before the trial even takes place. But I do want to say to you that we always have a choice. And this, and the one Marine lawyered up immediately, would not take any responsibility. The other one immediately showed remorse, said, I am so sorry. I've taken a vow to serve and protect people. And here I've victimized the very people that I've that I've made this commitment to serve and protect. And my heart goes out to him, especially because he made a mistake that will cost him likely his service in the Marines. And it sounds like he would likely would have been a really good Marine. But it wasn't a hate crime. It was two kids playing and causing damage. Yeah, yeah, it's important, it's important. It was not, that what we weren't picked out, picked upon, there were 44 other people that were whose cars or windows or whatever were also shot out. And hopefully this week we'll get them completely replaced. We're in process of doing that. So you can relax. That's what's going on there. So peace in our house, that there's always peace and there's always this um, opportunity for us to choose peace, to choose to be peaceful, to choose God's idea. I was, um, I had a couple of um, synchronistic things that occurred. We had a group of women who came uh, to become a focus group for us, and we had a great discussion. And in that discussion, one of the things that I discovered was that there's um, concern on parents' parts for their children to be, about their children being bullied. And then, and not just bullied with the physical bullies you can see, but being cyber bullied where they can't see and the people are protected by anonymity and how that feels. And coincidentally, so I had that conversation on Thursday. Coincidentally, last night as I was driving home from my various errands, I had, um, I had uh, public radio on because I wanted to listen to Prairie Home Companion, and it came later. But anyway, there was an interview on with Taylor Swift. And Taylor Swift was saying, T Taylor Swift was saying that a few years ago in the uh, country awards, she didn't do so well. She had an off night. And she was ripped, shredded apart for her poor performance. 
And then Andy, if I can have the next slide. And from that, she wrote a song that won her two awards. And that's, the song is Mean. And the lyrics, I might have to read the big lyrics because I can't see my little cheap lyrics. You with your words like knives and swords and weapons that you use against me. You've knocked me off my feet again, got me feeling like I'm nothing. You with your voice like nails on a chalkboard calling me out when I'm wounded. You picking on the weaker man. You can take me down with just one single blow. But don't you know what you don't know? Someday I'll be living in a big old city and all you're ever going to be is mean. Someday I'll be big enough so you can't hit me and all you'll ever be is mean. It's a beautiful, beautiful song. It, and, and it puts it all in perspective. And of course, Taylor Swift now is real big, living in a big old city. And whoever criticized her, whoever criticized her and shredded her up, was simply being mean. Now, here's the real important thing for us to remember. For most of us, for most of us, we are not experiencing the bullying. Now, I, those of you who are parents and are, my heart is really goes out to you because those bullies are just being mean. And there's no reason for it at all. But most of the time, it isn't someone else that's being mean to us. Most of the time, it's that little voice in our head that criticizes the self when we do anything. I was, um, I had such great opportunities to, to see this. And um, I got out of my, out of my garage, and I realized that yet again, I hadn't put earrings on. So I pulled into the parking space and um, back into my house and got earrings. I'm going, this is ridiculous, ridiculous, or worse. The voices in my head were just plain mean. Just plain mean. So what I'm saying is, and check, check your own voices. When you make a mistake, remember last week I said, this is the best spiritual practice. Oops, I made a mistake. Shrug it off. Give yourself the same love and consideration that you would want to give your children if they're being bullied. Don't become a bully to yourself. Do not. Do not become a bully to yourself. Start listening to what's going on in your own head about you. Because if you want to know what you'll be doing five years from now, listen to the voices in your head. Because what you declare is going to come about, is going to come about. So let's, um, there, let's see the next slide. Yeah. So there's a story about a king. And the king asked the, all the people in his land to cre draw a picture, make, get a photo, draw a picture of the most beautiful, peaceful setting that you can. And he ended up with two pictures that he really liked. One of the pictures was similar to the one you see. It was a beautiful mountain scenery with a calm lake in which the reflection of the mountain was just exquisite in the stillness of the lake. And then the other one was not so calm. It was moving water and the trees were moving and in fact, you could tell a storm was brewing. And then he looked closely, and he saw in the midst of this greenery a mother bird on her nest, sitting there on her nest with these little, little birds, even though it was in the midst of a storm. She wasn't protecting herself. She was sitting there being peace. So I believe that's exactly what we're called to do. We're called to be peace in the midst of the storm, in the midst of, so which one do you think he chose? The king chose the second picture to remind himself that it isn't just what looks peaceful that represents peace, but also that which contains chaos 
and that one person can choose to be peaceful even in the chaos. That one is you, it's me. We are all able to make a choice in every moment, in every moment. Let's take a look at the next thing. Did I say? I love this. This is one of my favorites, a Chinese proverb. If there's light in the soul, there'll be beauty in the person. If there's beauty in the person, there'll be harmony in the home. If there's harmony in the house, in the home, there'll be order in the nation. If there's order in the nation, there'll be peace in the world. That actually is set to music and it's really beautiful. But it's to remember, it, everything starts internally. Everything that we desire starts in here with an idea and a choice. So Dave Barry says, my therapist told me the way to achieve true inner peace is to finish what I start. So, so far today, I finished two bags of M&Ms and a chocolate cake. I feel better already. And sometimes that's how we deal with stress. I'm not saying it's a really good one. <sighs> I love this um, picture of the universe. And the universe is this whirling mass that we can't even imagine, we can't fathom it, for it contains, first of all, the energy of creation, and then extends out to every part of space and time. But um, Elizabeth Gilbert, the author of Eat, Pray, Love, said this. She said, imagine that the universe is a great spinning engine. You want to stay near the core of the thing, right in the hub of the wheel, not out at the edges where all the wild whirling takes place and where you can get frayed and crazy. None of us get frayed or crazy, I don't think. The hub of calmness, that's your heart. That's where we went in the meditation. That's where God lives within you. So stop looking for answers in the world. Just keep coming back to that center and you'll always find peace. So imagine with me, if you, just the way you are right now, could say my life is okay just the way it is, whether there's chaos, whether there's order and harmony, or whether there isn't, if you could say right now I can choose peace. No matter what's coming up, no matter what needs to be done, right now I can choose peace. And I can be grateful for the peace that I choose. I can be grateful for the peace that I choose. Imagine, imagine our community when we all know this all the time. And so when we look in one another's eyes, what we see is the beauty, the harmony of God, of God, of peace. Imagine what it's like in our greater community when we stop and introduce ourselves to people and they see who we are and we see who they are. This morning, of course, you know where I stopped, but it's a new Starbucks. And so I don't know all the people. And I walked in and it was filled. I mean, it was filled with this long line of people and children and a big crowd. And I thought, even though I was at least an hour early, maybe I shouldn't stop now. But I purchased my drink anyway, and I'm really glad I did. A woman that was right behind me also was just about to leave. And she was, um, you could feel her energy of impatience. And I looked at her and I, there were things in my mind that I'd rather not share with you. Because it wasn't pretty. It wasn't like, wow, I see God here. It was like something else, something other than that. <laughs> and so uh, we caught our drinks at exactly the same, just we were waiting exactly the same time. And she gave me this beautiful compliment. She said, what a great dress you have on. And then she said, 
Your nex- necklace is exquisite. You look like a queen. Oh, it was right. It was just so, it was so precious. It was so precious because I hadn't been feeling like a queen. I'd been feeling very judgmental. And that little moment of connection changed, first of all, my perception of her, my perception of me, and what is possible to choose peace everywhere, no matter where you are in the community. See what difference it makes. Each one is our teacher. So I think there. So Ernest Holmes says this. There cannot, we cannot be at peace until we know that the spirit is the only cause, medium, and effect in our lives. There is no past, present, and future to it. You'll find both of the quotes from Ernest in his book, 365, that we are using as our book for the year. And so we choose to know. I choose to be at peace because I know spirit is the only, the only cause, medium, and effect in my life. I choose to be at peace because I know that spirit is the only cause, medium, and effect in my life. Let's close by saying that together. I choose to be at spirit, at peace. Let's start again. I choose to be at peace because spirit is the only cause, medium, and effect in my life. And so it is. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And I welcome back to the platform, Allendale.